Welcome back to Giant Monster Games. Today, we're doing another modern budget deck tech, this time for Green Black Dredge Unearth. We're going to be spending a total of $35. Let's get into it, starting with creatures. This deck is running a total of 32 creatures, an absolutely astounding amount. We're going to start off with the creatures that have dredge, seeing as how it's a main mechanic this deck is focusing around. Our first creature is 4 Golgari Thug. This creature is doing two things for us in this deck. First, it's allowing us to dredge, which is obviously a mechanic we want to focus around. The second, it's allowing us to put a creature that maybe doesn't have dredge or unearth back on top of our library. You'll see those creatures in a second. Next we have four copies of Stinkweed Imp. This creature, again, is allowing us to dredge. Also, it's flying and has Death Touch. It doesn't read Death Touch, but it has the exact same ability as Death Touch. Moving on to the Unearth ability, first we have four Dregscape Zombie. This guy is just a cheap Unearth creature. Then we have four Extractor Demon. This guy tends to be the win condition for this deck, seeing as how we're going to be pulling a 5-5 flying creature for three mana out of our graveyard. It's worth noting his second ability, when another creature leaves the battlefield, we may have target player put the top two cards of his or her library into the graveyard. That is actually pretty helpful, because we generally want to target ourselves if something else is dying before this guy. And our last unearthed creature is two Rotting Rats. Now this guy does double duty for us. Not only are we going to unearth him from our graveyard, but he also allows us to discard a card and have our opponent discard a card whenever he comes into play. This is handy because it helps us set up our dredge mechanic. Well, we're on the topic of setting up our dredge mechanic. We have three copies of Satter Wayfinder. This card allows us to reveal the top four cards of our library, choose a land, and discard the rest. This is generally a backup plan because we have a better way of discarding cards. Next, we have four copies of Green Seeker. This is our primary discard mechanic because it allows us to throw a dredge or an unearth card into our graveyard and then fetch a land out of our library. That's going to help us thin out our library, so when we do dredge, we'll hopefully get more meaningful cards into the graveyard. The next two creatures, Ambuscad Shaman and Primal Force Mage, is what makes this deck quite unique compared to most other dredge decks out there. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, it gets either plus three plus three or plus two plus two. This means, as we unearth our creatures onto the battlefield, they're going to be getting this bonus. Remember that Extractor Demon that's a 5-5 flyer? Imagine it being an 8-8 flyer. I'm sure your opponent's going to have plenty of fun with that. And the last creature we have is Gerard, Golgori Lichlord. This is a one-off card that allows us to have an alternate win condition. Basically, we can unearth a big creature out of the graveyard, and then immediately sacrifice it off to make our opponent lose life. Also, Gerard gets bigger depending on how many creatures are in our graveyard, meaning that 32 creatures we have in this deck tends to make him pretty big pretty fast. Moving on to spells, this deck has a total of six spells in the main board. The sideboard, on the other hand, is basically all spells if we need to side stuff in to help us deal with a specific deck. Let's get into it. Four copies of Grapple with the Past. This allows us to put three cards from the top of our library into our graveyard, then return any creature or land to our hand. As you might guess, this allows us to pick up stuff that we may want right now. A single copy of Sever the Bloodline. This is our only removal spell in the main board, and we're largely playing it because it has flashback. We can cast it out of our graveyard, which is very important for this deck. And the last spell is Not the Bone. This allows us to get two life for each creature in our graveyard. It also has flashback, so in the mid to late game, if things start getting a little bit hairy, we can gain some life to hopefully stabilize ourselves to push through to the end. Now let's move on to our mana base. First we have three Evolving Wilds. This allows us to go and fetch a basic land, filtering our deck, and also giving us mana fixing if need be. Three Jungle Hollow. This is giving us some extremely affordable, as in cost, mana fixing. Four Lenoir Wastes. This is actually the most premium mana fixing we have in this deck. A single Sabgoths, the Restless Tomb. This is giving us a little bit of a man land option, especially because we're going to be having quite a few creatures in our graveyard. And lastly, we have five Forests and six Swamps. Moving on to our sideboard, I'm just going to quickly fire off all these cards for you. Four copies of Ancestral Grudge. Two copies of Bio Blight. A single Dark Blast. Four Nature's Claim three more Sever the Bloodline, and a single Tormod's Crypt. That concludes the entire deck tech. As you can see, it's pretty budget, but there is plenty of room to upgrade it if we want. But before we get into that, let's talk about some interesting lines of play with this deck. The ideal opening hand is to have Greenskeeper and one of your dredge cards. This allows you to play Greenskeeper on your first turn, second turn during your upkeep, you tap it, search your library for a land, and discard a card, 
specifically your dredge card, and then for your draw step, you dredge the card you just discarded. If that's not your opening hand, then you want either Rotting Rats, Sylvan Wayfinder, or Grapple with the Past, and then on turn 2, you'll be setting that combo up to start dredging turn 3. Ideally, once the deck starts rolling, you don't ever want to be drawing off the top of your deck. You want to be casting things out of your graveyard, and you want to be dredging every time you have a chance to do so. Something to make note of, don't be scared to cast Golgari Thug or Stinkweed Imp, because both of them have good side effects. Golgari Thug allows you to grab your Primal Force Mage, and Stinkweed Imp has Death Touch and Extreme Recursion, meaning your opponent's going to think twice before just swinging in with creatures, because they're getting the short end of the stick. You can always use Gerard as an alternate win condition if your opponent's made it so you can't really attack them. And don't forget to use Gnaw to the Bone to stabilize yourself if things get a little bit scary in the mid to late game. Now let's move on to upgrading this deck. The absolute first thing we should consider cutting is Evolving Wilds and Jungle Hollow. The main drawback of this deck is it is ungodly slow in the first three turns, because half your mana is coming into play tapped. These can be replaced with Overgrown Tomb, which comes into play tapped unless we pay 2 life, which is a small cost to have free available mana of both colors on turn 1, and either Bloodstained Mire or Polluted Delta, which allows us to fetch a Swamp, Overgrown Tomb being a Swamp. Life from the Loam is a good addition, because it allows us to lower the number of lands we have in our deck, and it gives us an additional dredge option. Adding in Blood Gas can make this deck quite competitive, seeing how he has crazy graveyard recursion every single time you play a land. And lastly, Golgari Grave Troll, because it is a dredge favorite, because it dredges 6, which is crazy, because that's 10% of your deck every time you dredge with him. And that concludes our budget deck tech for Black Green Dredge Unearth. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. It really, really helps the channel. But until next time, don't forget to game like a giant monster. <laughs>